because you demanded it. Here it is, folks. Secrets to sketching subway strap hangers. Yeah! Hi, folks. This is Alvin Subway Show for Bowling, your creative caricature marketing consultant. In this episode, I will be discussing how I draw people on the train. Let's go. First, you start with a rough sketch of the head shape and the basic features. At this stage, do not worry about getting a perfect likeness. You are trying at this point to get the perfect shape. Well, not the perfect shape, but the shapes, the features of the face. You want to draw it as exaggerated as possible, and you want to do this quickly before the person gets up and leaves, or worse, if they recognize that you are drawing them. Because once people recognize that they are being drawn, they have rather interesting reactions. I'm seeing right away that this man has a big forehead that slightly slopes back, so I make it go more. His nose, it's, it's big, it's bulbous, it overhangs, so I draw that shorter. His eyes, he's got these little beady, beady eyes that kind of seem like they're coming and slamming right into his nose, so I exaggerate that. Right now, what I'm doing here is I'm lowering the opacity on my picture because what I'm going to do next, I'm going to trace it. Okay, so I've added another layer. You might have um, noticed that. Well, there it is. I'm adding another layer. Another layer. Ha! I'm adding another layer, and this is the layer that I'm going to ink. I'm going to draw it on. You can do this in any particular application, Photoshop or whatever, I am doing this on the Art Studio app. It's a free app that comes bundled with um, your iPad. It is excellent, it is a poor man's Photoshop, but I digress. So, I'm going to the original sketch now, and I am erasing it to reveal the ink lines underneath. So this is basically what I'm working with. And I've used this method on the subway trains, drawing pa passengers, hapless strap hangers over and over again without them noticing. And this is the key, they cannot notice or they will change their expression, get up and leave, or worse, this is New York City after all. And so now we're going back into the layers here. I'm adding another additional layer because what I want to do now is I want to add additional features. And I want to get in really, really close this time and take my time. At this point, it doesn't matter what the passenger is doing because I've got those basic shapes that I wanted. I've got the rough sketch already inked, basically. And so now the rest of this is just, well, just finishing touches. He has expressive eyes. I did remember that. Expressive blue eyes. They look almost tender. But overall, he looks like a rough character, like he's been in a couple of bar fights. Okay, so uh, I draw everything now very carefully. Now I, I can use either a stylus to draw this with or the iPad comes with an eye pencil. If you can afford it, because it is pricey, it's about 100 and change, but if you can afford it, definitely get an eye pencil for the iPad. It is well worth your money. But I'm using the stylus. Anyway, I'm drawing now little bits of razor stubble because after all you can't really draw a new york a new york tough guy without drawing the razor stubble so i'm just drawing that in and this is the part we can really really get creative drawing these little minute details that add to the overall character of your caricature now we're doing this live so some unexpected things might happen in the course of me narrating this video. The dog might bark, my wife might come in and start yelling and screaming, why I haven't I done the housework? You know, anything can happen. So uh, my adrenaline is really 
flowing here, but I'm determined to get through with this tutorial so that you guys can be on your way to making highly exaggerated caricatures and doing live caricature work. When you draw on the subway, it's like live caricature drawing on steroids. These people haven't been asked, they, you, you don't have their permission to do this, and some of them might feel that you are violating their civil rights as human beings. I've actually had people tell me that, but I can usually talk my way out of it. So you may want to have some tagline available to get you out of it. I, I usually say something like, sir, you had such an expressive, powerful, manly face that I just could not resist drawing you. And men being creatures that are uh, ruled by our egos, they kind of like that and they fall for it. And I usually end up giving them the picture and in a lot of cases, I have uh, parlayed this into a job because if you can do this live and do it so good without them knowing it, what can you do if you're being paid to do this for people who are willing to sit there and uh, draw, have you draw them? So when you're drawing live on the train or in any public place, Make sure you have plenty of cards and plenty of flyers because people will come up to you and um, ask what you're doing. And um, some of them, like I said, they're so impressed, they hire you for parties. Now also, when you're drawing on the train, make sure you choose an end seat. Reason why I choose the end seat is because I can have, I can look up real quick and see directly across from me or down the line of the train without being seen right away. And that's what you wanna do. Now I've taken another layer and I'm starting to do my coloring on that layer. You don't have to do it, but I just like to do this as a finishing touch. Now I don't know what my iPad is doing here. I can't seem to get rid of this square with the dot. And it's a new iPad. I mean, these things cost thousands upon thousands of dollars. It shouldn't be doing that. Or maybe I'm just doing something wrong. But I'm soldiering on and I'm still coloring. What I love about the Arts, Art Studio app is that it is like a, a scaled down imitation version of Photoshop. And for what we need to do as an artist, this app works perfectly. Okay, I've added the coloring for a darker type of razor stubble, making this guy look tough. You can see by the guy's expression that he's not somebody to be trifled with. And again, that's what makes drawing on the subway so exciting. Okay, I'm going back into my colors and I'm choosing something else to do the shading with. Okay, now I'm choosing a darker color to do the shading with, but I'm going to lighten that up later on by going into um, the opacity uh, feature of this particular uh, app. I'm gonna use the opacity feature and bring it down a bit so that it's not quite so severe. Right now he's uh, kind of looking like a human raccoon here. and That's not the look that I want. I'm not adding too much shading, just shading around the eyes and the nose, maybe some of the folds of the face. You can do as much or as little as you want. It's up to you. All right, this is coming along rather nicely. Get some shading there in the ear area. Okay. This is more like a cartoon exaggerated portrait. You know, so I'm trying to get a little bit of realism here. You have to learn to become comfortable with the silence. Silence is your friend. Introspection is good, especially if you're an artist. Okay, look at all those layers. Okay, I believe what we're going to do next is 
bringing down an opac the opacity. Multi I used the multiply feature also because I was covering up my lines and forgot to do that. Okay. Using that multiply feature is very important when you're doing any kind of inking over, uh, over a layer because it shows what's happening underneath. Whenever I'm doing any kind of coloring or adding anything, I've learned to make use of layers because, man, if you mess up on one layer, you know, you will be, you will be crying on your iPad because you've just wasted minutes or sometimes hours or days of work. It's happened. So make layers your friend. Okay, now I just merged all of the layers because this thing is just about complete. All I have to do now is add a background again, like, like I just discussed. You are, I use the multiply feature so that I can see what's happening underneath my drawing. I think I'm just going to uh, color the background blue. Nice blue. To make everything stand out. Take a deep breath. Silence is good. I used to get really, really nervous making videos and having it be silent. And then I started looking at Bob Ross, the master, the way he did it. He became, he was an artist that was very comfortable with the silence. Sometimes he'd put you asleep, but he'd also put you into a space that was kind of zen-like. I've done that for people. Or maybe they're, they're just bored. Oops. Like I said, this is live, so I'm um, sorry for these things that are coming down. These messages, I couldn't turn off the notifications. I should have. Should have, okay. But there's our nice, pretty little blue, baby blue, blue, blue background. But now that I see him in the blue background, it looks a little too sanitized. I mean, after all, he is a tough guy, and this kind of doesn't fit the mood, so I'm going to change that. You know, I'm going to uh, colorify it. That's what it's called. No, that's that's not. That won't work. Okay, so I go back into adjust, make an adjustment. Uh, I'm choose black. Use the colorify feature of the iPad. Boom. Oh yeah. That looks nice and sinister. That's what we want. And so concludes this tutorial about how to draw exaggerated caricatures. Hope you enjoyed it. Elgin Subway Surfer Bowling here with a correction about Art Studio. The app is not free. It doesn't come automatically with the purchase of your iPad. No, you must download it from the App Store. There are two versions. There's the free version, which I have, and is fabulous, and there's an even more fantastic paid version. That's it, folks.